where I, when I was doing the research on glyphosate and looking into your information as well, the part that for me made it even a further reason not to touch as many plants, especially if you have autoimmune and you're unwell is because a lot of the um, the places where they have the organic plants are also next to the, you know, the plants that are GMO that are using the glyphosate, and then it travels in the air and it travels in the water. And so I think it's almost impossible for the organic plants not to get some sort of exposure to these GMO or glyphosate, you know, sprayed toxins. And so it makes it easier that if you then, if we know that it's kind of everywhere and it's pervasive, it's being sprayed in our neighbor's yards. If we don't eat some of those plants, then we won't get affected as much by the glyphosate that may be also in plants. And so therefore, if you just eat meat, then maybe that reduces some of your exposure. And then on top of that, even if you eat some of, let's say the grain fed cows, um, the fact that there was this one study that I saw that said, if you have sufficient, I think, um, aromatic amino acids, you may be able to uh, block some of the antimicrobial effects of, um, of glyphosate. If we eat sufficient meat, and then we do get exposed to some of the glyphosate, will we be protected because of those aromatic amino acids? Well, I do think it's a good idea to eat a lot of foods that have aromatic amino acids um, to buffer them against the, the loss because of the glyphosate exposure, because you're in, as you know, the gut microbes produce aromatic amino acids yeah. for the host. Our cells are incompetent. They can't make those, those important molecules. And those are you know, the co- part of the coding, the, the basic building blocks of proteins, but they're also precursors to an incredible number of important biologically active molecules. And I talk about that in my book, but the so the pathway that makes aromatics is blocked by glyphosate. It's used in many uh, microbes in our gut to make them for the host. Those microbes get affected because they're, they're basically getting killed because they can't make them. They're essential for them as well. And then we get an imbalance in the gut microbiome. We get all this inflammation and, and the immune cells come in and we get a, a lot of trouble with gut um, gut dysbiosis, gut damage, you know, celiac disease, um, uh, Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel, all these different irrit- irritable bowel disease, acid reflux. There's a whole bunch of gut problems that we suffer from today that I think are directly tied to the chronic exposure uh, of our gut microbes to glyphosate. Right. And the aromatics are precursors for serotonin, melatonin, dopamine, um, melanin, the skin tanning agent, uh, epinephrine. So all of these um, really important hormones and the, and the protection from the sun, all of those things come out of that chicken, also thyroid hormones. So all of them come out mm-hmm. of that chicken mate pathway. All of them are gonna be uh, insufficient in the context of life as a chronically poisoning our gut microbes. So certainly you want to try to, even you know people are, are taking a lot of aminos as supplements these days, mm-hmm. which I find interesting. You can get sort of a complex of aminos in general or specific amino acids. Glycine of course is a big one because that's the one that glyphosate is really messing up um, in, in the in the proteins. So, uh, you know, people, I, I think it's ironic, people are taking individual amino acids, it's like your food already digested, you should be able to eat proteins, including, you know, pre- wheat protein and casein and gluten are both very problematic for so many people. Yeah. And they have a lot of proline and proline is difficult to break down. And um, the enzymes that the microbes in the gut have that help you break down the uh, proteins that contain a lot of proline are disrupted by glyphosate. And so that those, uh, those proteins don't get broken down, they stick around and then they cause autoimmune disease by virtue of being a foreign protein. So we're getting a lot of these autoimmune diseases through molecular mimicry because of uh, proteins that we're eating that are not getting properly digested. Uh, I think that's all caused by glyphosate too. And then we're taking all these amino acids because we're essentially eating our food already digested, you know, because we can't break it down because we get then a deficiency of amino acids at the same time, because we're not able to supply ourselves. And then those proteins get into the lower gut and that causes a lot of problems too. That causes this basic pH because the microbes in the, in the colon break down the proteins that were not broken down earlier. They should have been broken down and absorbed in the mid gut. That didn't happen because the glyphosate disrupted the, bi- the microbes. And then those proteins end up intact in the lower gut. And that's where these other microbes are able to break down the proteins and fully break them down and release nitrogen, which is very basic. So you end up with um, a pH that's too high. 
in the gut and then that high ph disrupts a whole bunch of microbes that right. need to live in a lower ph and now you get a deficiency in short chain fatty acids which the microbes would have gotten for you from the fiber that you eat so the fiber doesn't get properly digested you don't have enough of these really really important short chain fatty acids there's inadequate nutrition in that regard as well so there's just a lot of things that go wrong because of glyphosate poisoning the gut microbes that's so interesting because a lot of the carnivores or a lot of the meat only dieters that I do a stool test, their short chain fatty acids look pretty good. And I wonder if it's because since they're not eating a lot of the plants that would even disrupt, you know, eating the glyphosate rich plants that may disrupt, disrupt the microbiome that would affect um, any of the short chain fatty acids are not really present. So therefore, whatever amounts they get from the meats and the butters and the, you know, the butyrate from that. Um, so then it can, even if it's smaller amounts compared to if you eat plant fibers, it's enough and there's less of the toxins coming in. So you right. can have a healthy gut microbiome. And that actually makes a lot of sense. I always thought about just the aromatic amino acids because of the shikimate pathway, but I realized it affects a lot more than that. Um, and it, I never correlated that tryptophan, you know, is a precursor to serotonin, which then would affect your sleep and and that's right. That's how you get the sleep and the depression. depression yeah, is I also never thought about that. Deficiency. Yes. 